I think about us, the three of us, what we could be. I think about it all the time. Please, it's terrible. No, it's not. I know June. She's my friend. I care about her. How's your day going? You look pretty. Thanks. I wore it just for you. Her father's a driver named Nick. He helped me to survive. Yes, you can, because I can't lose you. I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. What about you? Your girlfriend is a badass. Welcome to Above the Garage, a Nick and June The Handmaid's Tale podcast. Hi friends, welcome to our spoiler-free analysis of Season 1, Episode 2 of The Handmaid's Tale, which is entitled Birthday. Uh, This analysis is intended for new watchers and longtime fans. There's no spoilers. We're going to talk about the episode by itself or in relation to earlier episodes as well. And then on Wednesday, we'll release another segment called Deep Dive, where we will talk about the episode in the context of the show to date, which is through season four. But again, this episode, spoiler free. So let's do our round of introductions and dive in. Hi, I'm Dee Dee. Hi, I'm Scarlett. Hi, I'm Tina. Hi, I'm Violet. And I'm Kate. Okay, so this episode stands out to me because it possesses the single most ridiculous tradition in Gilead, um, the fake birthing scene of the wives. (laughs) Uh, But let's start at the beginning. So it opens with another ceremony. June's just dissociating hard, focusing on the color of the ceiling, and... Then she goes on a walk with Off Clan. Uh, the four of them are sitting at the wall while they're hanging somebody and they're just talking normally. So the contrast there's interesting. And then she and Off Clan take the long route home and are able to finally learn a little bit about their previous lives. Uh, they do not tell each other their names, which is funny. They talk about their kids' names, but we still don't know Off Clan's name. And we learn that Off Clan was a cellular biology professor and they killed all the professors but they kept her because of her work in ovaries and that june used to be a book editor i love the scene where the four of them are like by the wall and it just reminds me of like lunch in middle school where you're just like (laughs) how can we get as far away from authority figures as possible and just like chill the fuck out um the way they're talking about the rain even seems very just like like how like startlingly normal or something and like middle right. school yeah it's like yeah. we're gonna get stuck in the rain and, right. and she's Which like could... whatever i'm leaving like and it i love figures. how um june's figured out that like going the long way home is when you get a little extra conversation time with people and she knows now that um off glenn mm-hmm. is has some secrets to offer maybe or some advice and so i love that she's like so do you want to go the long way do you want to go by the river and off the like, yeah, totally. It just it's it's kind of like beginning rebel stuff. I love it. It's it's mm-hmm. cute. And June is Can... so like shy about it too. What did she say? Like, I'm not one of those people. Yeah. Was that this episode? Yeah. She's like, she's like, yeah. oh, I'm not like that. I'm not like a rebel. Mm-hmm. That scene that you're talking about, like that's when they see the church being torn down, and mm-hmm. she says uh, that they had erased St. Patrick's in in New York City, and that's June asks her like, how do you know that? Mm-hmm. How does she know these things? And then it goes to her voiceover and she explains that now Anchorage is the capital of the United States and mm-hmm. the flag of the United States has only two stars. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really striking that um, Gilead destroyed churches because they took over America under the guise of being this religious movement. They probably tagged on to Christianity. They're very clearly not christian they're not god fearing they twist the bible it's like it's this own it's like a perverted fascist state that uses the bible you know or parts of the bible it's it's very weird but i seeing that they destroyed churches like if they were a christian movement if they were a christian sect they would have kept the churches so it's very disturbing like and they're remembering like oh yeah there was a baptism there that's where you know that was my dad's parish and it's just gone like they have and that's um something that shouldn't happen in america right america is all about religious freedom and we can have mosques and we can have temples and we can have buddhist areas and like gilead though nothing we, we level the place yeah i kind of thought of that as like i mean even within just different denominations of christianity there's like so much that happens like between um 
you know, arguing amongst themselves kind of. So I feel like it's almost like the one true cult <laughs> is Gilead. And so they have to get rid of all the, mm-hmm. you know, the oh, Catholic yes. churches are a completely different thing in their mind. Like they, the things they believe are not mm-hmm. in line with what they want to do. So that kind of makes, I, I don't know. And it's interesting, like striking to see them, you know, literally demolishing a church. And she says Mm -hmm. that they did that in New York and threw all the stones into the the water just to like completely remove it. That's like Old Testament shit, right? Yeah. Raising a city to the ground. Like there will be no record, no memory of that anything was here before us. You know, it's very kind of. um... Middle Ages. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Old school. The very first scene of the episode, we kind of skipped over it. It's Nick watching her leave with Oglin. You know, he's loading the car up with the boxes and watching her at the gate. And all she knows at that point is Oglin has told her there's an eye in your house. And I think by process of elimination, she's realized it has to be Nick. And he's standing there loading the boxes, watching her. And at that point, you really don't know, is he watching her because he's worried about her or is he watching her because he's an eye and he's going to rat her out for, you know, saying something illegal to her, you know, her walking partner. So I really like that scene in particular, because you at that point, you just really don't know right. what's it's, going it's on with him. Kind of yeah, he's like spying on her, but, but why? <laughs> like for her yeah, benefit like or thing. for... He is clearly yeah. giving her special attention. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Again, ten, Again. Right? I was struck in this episode, there are four moments where he just kind of shows up. Um, mm-hmm. Just kind of happens to be there exactly at the time that June happens to be there. You know, <laughs> that's not by mistake, I don't think. You know, I really, watching it again, I was like, I mean, she never leaves the house, right? She like lives in that room and she maybe goes out once or twice a week. And Nick is always outside when she's always meant just to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of like, this is cool. Memorized her class schedule. Yeah. (laughs) Like you've got a secret admirer. It's so true. Uh, I mean, even times, Um, I don't want to skip to the end, but he does like time his exit from his house to exact like her footsteps. He even leaves his door open because he's mistimed it by a second. He's got to, yeah, he's got to get up. He's got to hurry up and get there. (laughs) Which means means that he is standing in his house, looking out the window, (laughs) watching her come out. It's like, how effing cute is that? Like, think about that. Oh my God. (laughs) But yeah, so back to the yeah the initial scene, uh, and Nick is watching her, looking worried, or he's he's giving her special intense. attention at least. Yeah. Yes, it's very intense. Um, yeah, it was striking to me in that scene too. Just watching it this time through, there's a very normal car parked across the street. It's like a oh. silver sedan. I, I don't know. It mm-hmm. it doesn't seem to fit in Gilead, and I'd never noticed it before because I feel like all the cars there are like black, you know, SUVs and such. Mm-hmm. I have nothing more to add about that point, except I, I think it looked strange to me, hmm. knowing knowing Gilead now. I have a yeah. point about cars that segues off that. Um, I thought it was hilarious. I noticed this time that the birthmobile is 100% <laughs> just a black eye van with like red, <laughs> red fabric curtains. on it. Like yeah. shitty... But it's like, it's still got the like, you know, uniformed guy in black tactical gear with his little radio walkie talkie and his like guns and like, but he's, he's standing next to like this like pink fluffy but it's eye-shaped a happy version. man. And I'm just like, that uh-huh. is still sinister as shit, it's dude. It's like, so <laughs> weird. The whole thing is so weird. Like they come and they pick you up and you, uh, we'll get to that later, but just the yes. whole. Uh. Oh, another thing that struck me in that scene by the wall it's some magical combination of makeup and cinematography, but their eyes are just like stunningly blue, both Auckland and June. And throughout the show, June's eyes are just gorgeous. And I'm sure they are in real life too, but they're really good at bringing that out somehow. The lighting and the colors in the show are just so blindingly beautiful. Like I, I, yeah, the cinematography is like unparalleled and I've never seen TV this pretty. There's gotta be some kind of like, like filter or something Mm -hmm. that they put on it in Mm -hmm. editing that, how it gives it that specific look to it but yeah her eyes are especially june's eyes are always like super like, blue ridiculously mm-hmm. blue like yeah <laughs> in the rain the walking in the rain bit again like i just particularly this time watching it and in the last time i watched it i was thinking about how interesting that is because when i was like i mean this kind of ties into the middle school thing when i was like in high school i used to love walking in the rain but it was now i feel like it's just kind of gross and like 
like a hassle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but there's so a time I, in your life where it's, it's great. Yeah. Where it's kind of great. And I was, I was thinking about that and I was like, you know, if I was in that situation exactly. yeah. where that they're in, it would be just delightful to walk in yeah. the rain. Like I just really relate to that for some reason. Like it feels like, you know, you're, there's almost an element of like living more in the present because you're in such like deep trauma mm. that like, you can't think about what you got to do tomorrow. Right. You're just thinking about like the next step you're about to take. Right. So no. I don't know that just, I, that kind of related well, to it's... the, to the rain walk to me. Cause it was like, you could walk through this rain and that's all you're thinking about is just how it feels. And like, mm. yeah. It's kind of incredible. Mm. And it comes up again in a, like, this isn't very spoilery in a, a soon future episode where she's really excited about walking in the rain. And I think it's exactly mm. that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's being stuck in a place like Gilead where you start to value literally every other thing like yeah every sensation and being rained upon and every step you take is valuable I mean it's it's the rain is almost like it's like a physical touch thing too almost like it's like yeah you're you know it's a stimulation of like physical touch I don't know it's really interesting it makes you feel alive yeah yeah so yeah, so she's walking back and they're telling each other who they are. She's a, a cellular biologist off the yes. right? Something From like Montana. That, yeah. I did not expect Montana. I think that's funny. No, I forgot that actually. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. yeah. I just assume they're all from like the Boston area. Right. Like, right. But no, they like ship them in from all over the country, which makes it even more sinister, mm. I think. I, I love that they mentioned casually that all the professors were systematically murdered. Mm-hmm. Right. Why? Yeah. Right. I had a question about that too. Like, are they talking about just the women or all of them? I mean, that's something they did, I think, in other totalitarian regimes throughout history, right? Is like anyone who is educated and able no. to question. No. Like, no. Yeah. No. My assumption would be all. That would be what I would assume. Yeah. That's what I thought. But I feel like I, I was talking to somebody about it and we were speculating because it, it did seem... I don't know. I don't remember why we thought that maybe it was just the women, but yeah, she definitely doesn't say just the women. She says all the professors or mm-hmm. yeah. All these little, they do these beautiful little, just throw away casual. Oh yeah. Destroyed the churches. Oh yeah. The professors all got killed. And you're just like, Jesus Christ. Like it's just right. my stomach twists. Could she possibly Ooh. And then back to the rain and then back to the pretty, beautiful, peaceful city. You know, it's like this, these little, um, hints of this sinister underbelly i love the scene with the eye van was that in this part roughly when they're walking home yeah yeah mm-hmm. all right yeah and oh yeah yeah, yeah. For them. i and loved it because them. we've yeah. heard about the eyes uh just mentioned that there are eyes we, we they haven't even really gone into it you're starting to get they're the secret police they're like the gestapo right and then mm-hmm. here it comes and everything just stops and the van pulls up really fast and they arrest this dude and he drops his briefcase. It's like, they don't give a shit what you were doing. They're taking your body into custody. You're probably never going to be seen from again until you're hanging on the wall. And what's it? She says, She's, it's okay to be uh, glad it wasn't you. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. okay to be relieved that it wasn't you. And June says, that. but it was someone. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine living under that kind of tension? Like, is today the day that I get arrested by the eyes? Is today the day someone drops dead? Like, that's right. And that's not healthy. It doesn't feel good, right, to live in that kind of terror. Um, I know. I feel like even maybe once it happens, it's almost a relief because you don't have to be anxious about it anymore. I don't totally, know. Totally. Yeah. yeah I've not been there. It's, it's depressing, but true. <laughs> right. But, um, and she gets back to the Waterford house. And I love this scene, actually, because, scene. you know. Mm, so good. He's recently basically told her by talking to her normally that I I think, you know, I know you're a human being and I see you as that and I respect you. And now she's, he, he's like nervously waiting for her. She gets there and she just shows up, just happens to be in the kitchen. Yeah, exactly. Just just casually strolling (laughs) through the house. Oh, hey, just in the kitchen, just getting some, getting snacks. Some almonds. I don't know what's on the table. Check this weird box on the table. Yeah, Yeah, what's in the box in here? Shut the box. Y'all, I really need to know what's in that box. He's a and he knows she was late. He's like That's right, tapping he on the bookshelf and like pulling out the drawer and oh, it's uh-huh. empty. And I'm just like, buddy, <laughs> should I rearrange the washcloths? I don't like, know. Like we see you and you're not fooling anyone. Okay. And you're then not he catches just... the sight of her leg and he and he's like, and he lets her like, like he knows that she sees him 
eyeing her and he lets her see that she he thinks she's you know not just a woman but like a beautiful woman right he doesn't like yeah. break eye contact right away and she pulls her dress up a little further and uh i just love that moment and yes he's just a ball of awkwardness around her constantly <laughs> I, I feel love... like I have a full monologue on this scene. Like no, I'm too. like you go first. like loaded, ready. Go, go, go. <laughs> do it, do it yeah. now. I'm I'm next. I'm in queue. Oh, you need I'm to gonna... yes, because this is you like unloaded in the message last night when we were watching. I was like, you gotta yeah. say that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna try to like try to make it not a rambling six hour conversation, but basically like in that scene, I find that this actually in this whole episode kind of, I feel like there's so many instances where you watch the show. And you're you're like in June's headspace, obviously, because that's what the show is like doing with the voiceovers and with her perspective. And so you're like seeing everything kind of this like fun, flirty version of like a scene. And then you watch it again from Nick's perspective, and you're like, no, he's like losing his shit. Like he's like really <laughs> not okay right now. Right. And I I feel like it's almost like they're in two different scenes. Like so she's true. in, she's in one scene where it's like, oh, look at my leg flash. And he's in another scene, like, shit, I have to tell her about this meeting that she has to go to tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know what, what it even is or what's going to happen to her. Like, I don't know how to protect her. Like, mm -hmm. so it's like, he's having this very serious, like breakdown, <laughs> like yeah, mental right, breakdown yeah. while she's like, you know, flashing her leg at him. And he's like, I can't even, I can't even really comprehend what's happening there because I'm so stressed out. <laughs> no, he's right. I love that. You're totally right. Um, in this yes, yeah. episode, so many people tell her what to do and where to go. Right. So like there's, you know, here's the birth mobile and Rita rushes in, like put your fucking coat. She puts her, I think she puts a coat on her. Like, mm -hmm. like she doesn't have any choice. She's going um later in the episode she says i can't send my regrets this isn't an invitation i'm being ordered to go see the commander right um nick actually does not tell her what to do he says you should be careful that's advice that's kind of, it's not like pull your dress down or stop it he just says like please think of your safety like because that's all he's thinking of is like and I love, I love how unhinged he is because there's multiple things he's upset about there, right? Like he's upset because the commander wants to get her alone, which is against the rules, like very against the rules. It is bad. And I mean, it sounds like a setup for her to get assaulted, right? Like, am I the only one that I heard that? Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh God. No. And so like for Nick to yeah. have to deliver that, like, hey, by the way, you might get assaulted tonight, like off the record, you know, like that's so upsetting. And then like the other thing is, He's really concerned about her talking to Avglen, you know, like, yeah, so so he's got like multiple breakdowns happening, like multiple urgent, I have to warn her, she doesn't know, she doesn't see the danger that I see. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, she's just like, you like that, don't you? You like my life? And he's like, he's like, yes, but also like, can we be serious for a second? Like, and she's like, you fucking like it. You like it a lot. You know, it's like, it's like, like you said, two completely different mindsets. Yeah, it's the same with the, with the, I mean, we're skipping ahead, but the walk at the end, too. I feel like it's exactly the same. Like, her voiceover is all like, mm -hmm. is he jealous of this? And it's mm -hmm. like, you know you just played Scrabble. He doesn't he know does, you just played does, Scrabble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's imagining a million scenarios, and they're all very, very terrible. It's not right. just a board game. Like, they at least are, he sees she's okay. Yeah. Like, he's probably, like, sort of relieved. At least she's, like, you know, not obviously physically hurt, and she seems like she's okay. Yeah, he, well, he still like, wants to know what happened. Like yeah. he's still like he's checking. You know, him. wants to yeah. know if he if he needs to step in or like you know what he needs to do at that exactly. point because he doesn't know what happened. So I yeah, I'm just like kind of mad at you now watching that scene because I'm just yeah. like, you think this is silly and funny? You need to tell him <laughs> that you just played Scrabble. No, it's it's Give him true. Some like, relief. You know, he's, he's so worried. worried. <laughs> well, like the scene where he is watching her window right when when the bell chimes nine nine o'clock don't be late he's he's again like there's a country song every light in the house is on because you're trying to get someone's attention every fucking light in his little tiny apartment is on. have you seen his window i mean dude has like what a candle we can't see shit in his apartment but like in that scene he is <laughs> like, lamp, on, one lamp and, and he's on the porch I, that one always really um struck me as him just like showing himself as a male like as a protective male like i'm here i know what's happening you're gonna go down and possibly get assaulted and like 
if you need me, come get me was kind of, or if you don't want to go, yeah. I'll step in and fake something. Like, I think that's what the offer was. That's, that's how I always saw that scene. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that like, I, I feel like, yeah, he's always trying to weigh like, you know, at what point can I intervene and like lose my life? Right. Like right. Yeah, at what point is it you're going to die if I don't do something like that's yeah. the place where he would have to step in. And that's so, the long game, right? Is the long game yeah. is like, ima imagine the torture of that. Like but it's a terrible situation. To right. He's the right. only person who's going to help her. So he's going to have to let some bad shit happen to her to help her at the right time. Because he's going to feel awful. He, he gets to do that yeah. one time, right? Like right. You, get, right. you get to show one yourself chance. as a, a uh, traitor once mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is not a card you play twice right so like so he's kind of like i'm here i will i will i always have this i imagine him with this running monologue of like i'll have the car running like just fucking say the word just run down the stairs i'll pick you you know we'll drive to canada <laughs> like i think he's always ready to just like step in and help her if she needs it and that kind of comforted her right because she was up there freaking out in a room she's like pacing and like chewing her fingernails she's really nervous she's like she calms when she sees him yeah Mm -hmm. And then she sees him and she's like, okay, like, I feel like she that calmed her monologue Stills. down. So it, it helped a little bit. Why do you think she put the shades down? Yeah. It's a good question. I think Ooh, she's like, you can't, you can't be staring at me, bro. Like you can't, <laughs> people are gonna. Like, is, maybe she, it was... is she still nervous about him? Maybe at that point? I think she could Definitely. be. Yeah. She, or it's she doesn't know, she doesn't know what go. his reason is. Yeah, or that too. That's the true. signal like, hey, I'm gonna go. Like, it's okay. You don't have to worry yeah, about like, me, maybe. I'm, like, things are normal. Yeah. I'm gonna handle it. I'm that's ending me. this phone call. Like, that's her, like, uh, signing off of <laughs> AIM or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the door closed sound. I feel like um, I, I read that scene. Like, I'm trying to remember how I, what I thought about the shade thing the first time I watched it. Because I feel like now I'm too, like, mm -hmm. I'm not objective anymore because I, like, know their whole storyline. So it's like, I can't. Yeah, like I can't see the scene how it was originally intended anymore. So I'm trying to think like, what would she be thinking? I think I think she was probably a little bit like creeped out. Cre yeah, a little bit. Like not, she doesn't know why he's staring at her. I mean, at dude, that dude, point. dude's on his fucking front porch in the middle of the night, staring at you, with staring every light at you, in his house yeah. On, <laughs> yeah, like very conspicuously, not like from behind the door, waiting to time his walk out with you. Dude's like on the porch, like hey, eye contact. You know, it's very. Right. She doesn't look scared. She doesn't look scared. She looks kind of flirty like that's i don't know like she did her expression because i pay attention to that scene as well because i'm like why are you putting the shades down but yeah, she she scary. doesn't smile she doesn't smile but she doesn't look scared either i think she enjoys the power it. that she she has. loves the attention oh yeah, my god that's true i can see and that i think too. you know at that point she Again, she still doesn't really know if she can trust him or not. For all she knows, he could be going to turn her in the next morning. And here's this guy leaning full out his like front porch, like to watch and see what monitoring she's doing. Her. Monitoring yeah. her. Is he reporting? Because he's he's like, he's like, at nine o'clock, handmaid, like left her room and then lights went on downstairs in the kitchen. And then she went to the commander. Like he could be documenting that shit to turn her in. You're totally yeah. right. In her mind at that point, she doesn't know. And I she mm -hmm. has to know, like I said, by process of elimination, he is the eye in the house. Mm -hmm. It's not Rita. It's not Serena. He's the only other male in the house. It's not Commander Waterford. It has to be him. One thing I liked about the <laughs> Scrabble scene was that I love the creepy ass music they play behind Waterford. It's like, it's like, like a horror movie. You're just like, oh, it just like makes your stomach twist, right? Like, so even the, it's this moment where it feels good, just like you were saying, Violet, like the rain on her skin. She's mindful. She's in the moment. When she's playing Scrabble, she's smiling because she's a book editor, right? And these are words and letters, and that feels good to her. This is her skill set. June lost to him by three points in Scrabble. What that mm -hmm. means is that she let him win, right? I was like, saying, yeah, she definitely yeah. She let him says win. that later, actually. In a 100%. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so it's funny that, like, so she could have kicked his ass at Scrabble, and that must have felt really empowering, really good to not only be able, allowed to read, but to be seen kind of as a human. Um, and it's, it would be nice if it wasn't so fucked up that, like, he is grooming her. He is mm -hmm. a predator. He's a sexual predator, obviously. And it's not enough for him to have the ceremonies. He wants her to need him for those favors. He wants her to like be uh, his little pet, his, his plaything who actually mm -hmm. likes him and gives him pleasure secretly. And like, it is so twisted. And I, I think it's interesting watching that scene on both levels. Like you've seen her have like 
no freedoms, no privileges, no identity. And she's playing Scrabble and she's smiling. It feels fucking good. She's kicking a man's ass at Scrabble. And you feel good for her in that way. But then you're like, golly, June. Like, sh- also, I hate this because this is twisted. You know what I'm saying? Like, Well, and you kind of wonder, like, well, it's a couple of things. So I, that whole scene makes me so anxious, like putting myself in her shoes because I keep thinking, why... I feel like if I was June, I would be questioning if he was testing me by making me read. Totally. Like, he's literally gathering stuff that he could turn her in and have her killed for. Blackmail, and totally. That's, yeah. that's, yeah, in part, that's the dynamic of power. That's what he needs. Fred mm-hmm. needs power because he doesn't feel powerful because he's insecure and small. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's it's a very, like, specific test, almost like on both their sides, because he's, like, testing how much she'll break the rules, kind of. Mm-hmm. Like testing if she'll obey him over the wow. law. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Girl, I hadn't even thought of that. That's a great way of putting it. Yeah. Like, well, because he wants to break the law a lot with her, right? Like, right. And so he's and like over. testing, like, well, if I give her reading and sh- she's, she'll do it and not say no, right. then what else will she do for me? Yeah. At what point will she, Ugh. you know, draw the line? Creep. How Real awful. quick about that Scrabble game. Like you guys have played Scrabble, right? You know, mm-hmm. you get like a row of shit tiles and like you have to play the word like cat. <laughs> you don't get nation. <laughs> you don't get nation or larynx. I remember we were, I was watching it with Violet last night and I was like, that always makes me so mad. <laughs> Nobody got like a shit row of tiles and had to play All like vowels. cat or boo or like <laughs> nation and larynx. Come on. Like <laughs> it is. She, she is that a always editor, drives a system me nuts. Book editor. She right, but like the luck of the draw, like come on. Anyway, that's yeah. just in the side, like and and also just like touching the dictionary. How much she like valued just literally like getting to the dictionary. She touched all the books first, and it it was such a big deal to her. What did she say to of Glenn? Um, she was like, "Yeah, we did like a ten part series on the history of falconry." Falconry, yeah. And yeah. Of, of Glenn's like, Sounds "Dude, amazing. I'm into that. Like, I would read that shit. I I feel I felt that in my bones. Like, yeah, I would do so that right bored. now." yeah give me you, that i'll do that you would i will dead ass read your 10 part history of falconry like that's Same. how bad things are you know? <laughs> oh man i'll read it for fun to be honest yeah sounds good we um we kind of skipped over the actual yeah, the birth thing, thing which yeah. was insane to me and i can't skip over it because the like, Honestly. horrific on 10 layers 10 levels yeah. i remember the first time i watched that episode i didn't really I didn't like immediately comprehend what was going on. I was like, <laughs> what the fuck are these women doing? Like, are they, they're f- imitating labor? Like what kind of sick, twisted, I know, what? Man. Like How it took me a minute to playing. realize. Yes. It took me a minute to realize what the fuck? This is the most twisted, like bizarre. Like, I mean, of all the things that they have the wives do in Gilead, I cannot believe that they did not draw the line here. June can't either. She's just like, can't stop laughing, smiling. I mean, they have ice chips. They have a heart playing. Uh, Mrs. Putnam is really into her fake labor pains. It's insane. They're eating the grapes. Reason, the whole oh the reason God, it's, it's so, so scary, like it scares me because they are rewriting history, right? Kind of like in 1984, they just would rewrite the newspapers. They would just like change the headlines mm-hmm. to make the history match what they wanted. So the wives are going to remember the birthday and the labor. All of them were there. It took 12 hours. We were on the floor <laughs> in the parlor, you know, like they are making a labor story for the wife, this kidnapper, right? Like that's awful. I'm not even going to get into like the level of rage this episode. I'm a mom, several of us are, and just like bitch rolling her eyes at her little fake labor taking too long like motherfucker mm. try it for real okay <laughs> fucking you yeah. try it like we kind of skipped over june's um flashback to when she's giving birth to hannah yeah okay um, mm-hmm. yeah. she's in the car going to the hospital and then you see all these people in the hospital praying because obviously um she says one and one in five is a healthy baby mm. um and i think that's a contrast to all those times that maybe they're protesting in abortion clinics and you have all these violent people trying to not let you go into the abortion clinic. And then it mm-hmm. goes to all those people in the hospital where you're going to go get birth praying like weirdly. Cause it was a very weird scene. Well, it was weird. Cause they didn't help their, 
they they were asking for help like luke is going like can you help her into the hospital and the people are not actually helping other people they're not helping the women in labor they're praying to god for the baby it's like and that was something very real when i was pregnant the baby is like a concept it's like a like a idol that everybody and all of a sudden when you're pregnant there is no more you you're a vessel Mm -hmm. you're the you're the mother of the baby the sacred Mm -hmm. like that's and that's gilead to a t right like the mother is like bleeding out outside the hospital and trying to walk through her labor pains and all these assholes are praying with their eyes closed like you're missing the point like help the mother right yeah. like that's how you get babies like and then and, and the nurse the nurse says um praise be yeah, after she asks, the gilead you know, like yeah the gilead beginning it's already right? there yeah it's already there it's, I, it's weird i'd like to note that luke was asleep on the couch as though he had yes. been through a really tough physical <laughs> ordeal that was exhausting to him and then left gonna... then left June and Hannah alone sleeping with the door open while he went to get snacks while there was a fertility crisis. No, he and then better. and then when June was like, "Hey, where's Hannah? Do you have the baby?" He's like, mm, "Wait here, honey." Like, you think she's just gonna stand there while somebody's potentially stealing her kid, like her newborn infant? And then when I was watching it with Violet, she pointed out when you know the woman has Hannah, um, he's really like aggressive with her when he's trying he's pulling her back i was and afraid he was going to drop the baby the baby was gonna i was fall out of that woman's terrified arm. he was going to drop the baby and also you know this poor woman like yes she's like stealing your infant but she's, she's clearly very traumatized as wrong. well too right like why is she there trying to steal your baby you know yeah you should have had some compassion for her i felt like i don't know handled it more delicately or something because she was like Confused. yeah going through her own trauma and mm-hmm. needed yeah. help I agree we saw in the hospital that you know when they go to bathe the baby the nursery's empty june asks like where are the babies and the nurse says you know two went to the icu and the rest went to be with god so i'm assuming right. that woman was in the hospital she gave birth and she, she lost her baby. baby she mm-hmm. lost her baby so yeah it's kind of tough yeah the way they filmed that with all those empty bassinets it was almost like a graveyard or like mm-hmm. Very it was very disturbing and they had almost like a broken music box in the background it was like it was like it should have been a happy thing but it was vacant and unsettling and and i thought it was very interesting you can totally see where the the fascist go- uh, government took hold all these people are so hopeless like if there's no children there's no future that then humans are dead within one generation right so like everybody was desperate and scared and then this government steps in like we are all about babies we are really good. We know how to make babies and that's how they took over. And it's just very clear to me. It's like, it was a scary time. Like that, that was not the normal birth experience. One thing I loved was June being strong for her name of Warren. Yes. So I loved that June is walking into this birth and she's heartbroken, right? She's like, she's remembering how hard it was for her. She's clearly seeing that the wives are these evil bitches like but she is just like a good wingman she is she walks and all these other women are like doing this like ritual like breathe 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 june makes eye contact she goes over to the bedside she gets her attention she's like i'm here with you like i'm your friend and i'm here and there is nothing more calming than that it's like being a doula you know and the same thing when they take her baby that scene was just yes so heartbreaking Uh, when all the women gather around her it's the cinematography is beautiful and it's just such a moving moment and sharing her grief like i don't know yeah. if you guys have seen midsummer there's this um beautiful scene where th- it's like this cult and all the women have the same emotions like if one woman's wailing they all start wailing if one woman is laughing they'll all laugh because they share as sisters they share f- one woman's grief is everyone's grief and i loved that scene where they're all like touching shoulders and kind of leaning in it almost looks like a flower or something it's really beautiful but they're mm-hmm. almost like an organism like there's they're, they're 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 holding space for janine's grief and that was awful like instinctively right you're supposed to go skin to skin you're supposed to like have the baby put the baby on the mama right and then they bond and the milk lets down and all this and they hand it to a fucking stranger and you know when they all gather around her i think you know they realize the next time this could be me i'm good i could be the one that's losing my baby to this awful woman you know that's gonna steal it from me it's it's them they are all janine in that chair that's right losing their baby you know that's so that's going to be their future they hold the grief together right 
because it's too much for one woman to bear, but they all feel it. The birthing scene and the whole episode is just the reality of what the handmaid is and what the handmaid's going to go through. Like we get to see it in the second episode of, of the show. Um, and like Didi was saying, it's so, it's so real. And, and Tina also said it, you know, this is what you're going to do. You're going to give birth and they're just going to take your baby away. And um, I think Madeline Brewer did a great job of portraying that grief and that pain that she felt in that moment. Cause it's, it's really heartbreaking when you, when you see it. I mean, every time I see it, 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 like I get emotional because as a mom, I can only imagine what do these women have to go through besides the rape and besides, you know, if you get a shitty wife like Serena and all that, like to get to that point where they just take the baby away, you can't even, she didn't even hold her. She didn't even hold her. And there's this small detail of the scene. There's an aunt that gets close to Janine. She's an older aunt and she gives her a kiss in the cheek. Um, it's, it's a really subtle, like I saw it yesterday, but the other aunts just simply walked away, but that aunt stayed with her. And I thought that was something that, you know, you really have to pay attention to see, but I guess it's just, they understand, even though they're in those roles, there's some people that are in those roles that they don't want to be in those roles. Yeah. I had the impression, actually, I was thinking about the the ants in that scene because I sort of had the impression that that one, the one that kissed her was like more of a, um, like a midwife. And I don't know, do all the ants have that as part of their job? I don't remember. Like, do they have like training in that stuff? Like all of them? Well, so think about it like um, if you had, like, in the way that a vet would help cows deliver calves, like, who would you call if a cow was pregnant? You'd call the vet. So they are the handlers of the handmaids. So they not only beat them into submission, brainwash them, torture them, whatever. They, yeah, measure their bellies. They get their vital signs. They make sure everything is going according to plan. So I'm, I'm... and I don't know if they have doctors or, well, certainly not female doctors. No. In Gilead, so you right? think so. Lydia probably could have done the whole birth herself? Like it wasn't that they needed another aunt there so. for it? Okay, I interesting. So. I wasn't sure about that. And that scene, it seemed like. And we don't, I don't think there's any answer to that. My other thought that I had this off that topic, um, when Avglen says she's going to go try to find out if anybody knows what the commander wants with her, that must have meant there was someone else in the house, right? That was in the network. So do we like any guesses on, um, obviously Amar- not the wives, they're bitches. Amartha. Oh, that's mm-hmm. right. Maybe Amartha. Yeah. Uh, that's my guess. Me too. It, it made me feel less alone. Like, like, okay, so it's easy. You can, there's people, there are good people around. When they were back in the birth mobile, going back home, and that's when off Glenn says that she couldn't find anything mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. why the commander wants to see June alone. And uh, she says that Nick told June not to trust off Glenn. And she seemed surprised. Like she seemed for a second there, like he told you that. And then she's like, well, he's right. You know, you shouldn't trust anybody, especially a carpet munching gender trader like myself. And obviously we kind of know that she was a lesbian. I feel like off like, was having a mental breakdown there. Don't you like over, over was, the fact, like it was it giving her anxiety, like to think like, yeah. why would he be, why would he be worried about me? Somebody must be onto me. Somebody must be like, that's right. Yeah. She was surprised. Terrifying. Yeah. She was surprised. Yeah. Like her expression was that like, it was just a small detail. And then I actually she... thought that I would freak out more if I was her at that moment. Oh, I would have too. She's probably I would have gone home and thrown it. Well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, following with what you were saying about, Janine like just the the grief of having Angela taken away in the scene where they bring Angela in for her to breastfeed Mm -hmm. and I just that scene just the way like Janine seems like she's really trying to disassociate from the Mm -hmm. baby like when they first bring her in but like fails very quickly fails at that like it's just but you can just see her kind of being like not wanting to look at the baby or you know speak to her in a motherly way like it was very detached and then as soon as the baby started feeding she was just like I don't know she just couldn't do it anymore (laughs) so like so then um after the the next morning after the Scrabble game when June walks out Mm -hmm. you know relieved that it was just Scrabble and just kind of like proud of it almost like she's like She's we played like Scrabble. Flaunting it yeah, without, she's flaunting. Like, yeah. Totally. Yeah. And then she, and then Nick sees her 
as he's coming down his from his apartment. He was waiting in his apartment. Yes, he was. For like what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour? Who the hell knows? He knew that June was going to go shopping. The other <laughs> girl was at the gate. He's like looking out the window. He's like waiting. He's probably like watching her window. He probably sees when she leaves her room. <laughs> like that's intense. So that he can be beside her for just a few seconds and check in. Even yeah. just that tiny glance. He's like uh, two glances, right? One and then two. Like you look okay. And she's smiling, right? And so he's like, okay, you're all right. He's just offering. It's it's like we always say, sometimes all he can do is show her that he sees her. And he cares, yeah. Mm -hmm. And That's she's cool. excited, right? She thinks she's got information to go share with her friend. Like, I can say the commander's going to DC. Like, I'm mm -hmm. doing something important and relevant. And yeah, I feel that there's a little bit, though, also that's like, well, it, she says it. She's like, I bet he wonders what happened last night. She's like. If he does. Yeah. What is it? Does he care? Yeah. yeah. Does he care? Does he right. care? Yeah. And she I think he does. He and she likes that yeah. he cares. And it's, she. She's it's that thing. Blunted. This episode. Is this the one that starts off with her with looking at the blue ceiling? Yes. I was yes. going to say that. What I love <laughs> I about this. Say. And you guys have really brought that out during this, this episode, that conversation. But it's, it's showing what dissociation is. Right. So mm -hmm. like, it's not. You it's because reality is too upsetting and you can't be there present. You can't like be fully emotionally present while you're being raped. So you are in your head thinking about the word blue and free associating and remembering nice memories and like you're not in your body. And that, that is a protective mechanism. And I think that's the same thing with her like flirty storyline with Nick, right? Like she's, um, Ooh, he's the driver and maybe he's into me and, da -da -da. and it's amazing how these little moments, break like it would be a cute little story a dissociative story if it wasn't for like the i van showing up to like haul someone off to their death or the you know they're having lunch with their friends by the river and there's a body going up the wall like right june's writing fan fiction of her own life yes the disconnect of her <laughs> being like oh and there's the cute lawn boy and i bet he's <laughs> jealous and meanwhile nick is like are you okay like i could have the car running in five seconds like we i will i will kill fred if he touched you you know what i mean like he's so worried again and, i would like to mention that he left his fucking door open <laughs> i actually wonder if he even had any reason to walk down there like i kind of wonder if he just was like you know and that's why yeah. i left the door open because he was just going back he's just he's gonna go back, back inside to, to do what he was yeah <laughs> like he didn't actually yeah, he have wasn't a task my to son. do i haven't just... finished making my bed but i want to walk yeah like he, he oh. just saw he was like oh shit like ran outside real fast basically he just walked inside the garage walked around for a second and back upstairs. oh my god that's... yeah like, like anxiously box, anxiously smoked box. a cigarette <laughs> yeah, and then went yeah. back inside he's trying and that's i think i think that's why there's some mystery she doesn't feel like this guy's a bad dude he makes shitty jokes it's a disconnect right you see the eye at the beginning of the episode loading the guy up in the van for god knows what like what researching the wrong thing as part of his job before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she knows by process of elimination he is probably the eye who would do this to people but also he's flirting with her he's hey watch out you know being care being cute and flirty mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if there's a disconnect you know do i trust my instinct or do i trust the information i have correct and her instinct is that he's safe right what scarlet was saying is totally true i don't i don't think she's ever afraid of him i think it's more like you know she's just not sure what he's up to but i don't i don't it doesn't read as fear to me it reads as kind mm -hmm. of like right you know inquisitiveness or something yeah. curiosity totally i agree mm -hmm. And the song that they walk out to, it's so perfect. Obviously, we all know it well. Um, but I looked at the lyrics this week. A simple Mind song. Yeah. There's so many lines just in this one song that are so fitting to Nick and June. Um, Tell me your troubles and doubts. Give me everything inside and out. Love strange, so real in the dark. Think of the tender things that we were working on. Slow change may pull us apart. Uh, rain keeps falling. Down, down. Will you recognize me? Call my name or walk on by. Don't you try to pretend it's my feeling will win in the end. I won't harm you or touch your defenses. Anyway, I've gone on too long, but Adam Taylor is brilliant. He's also really good when she gets to the end of the gate and Av Glenn is a new person, the way it stops uh -huh. and oh, the yeah. score changes to that just real like jarring like piano notes over and Creepy. over. It's, it's so very creepy. creepy. It's, like, it's yes. so creepy. And it's such a like a, shifting Killing, tone yeah. from the song 
Yeah. And then, you know, they're walking and they're having a normal, you know, oh, how's the weather, you know, under his eye conversation. With joy. And then she goes, fuck. Yeah. And then we go right back to the song. It's so good. Like the cues is, it's so, it's just amazing. The whole thing. Yeah. Is really we're, good. Um, yeah. We were talking too about how like those two songs, me and Tina were talking about this yesterday, like the, the kind of, you know, retro fun vibe of the, of the song and then the creepiness of the music. Like it's, it's, just like who June is kind of too because she's like dealing with all this really messed up stuff but then she's like trying to be silly and funny and sarcastic it's it's just perfectly matched to her personality I feel like you're right when she's around him she's hearing 80s slow jams and (laughs) (laughs) like dreaming of romance and making bad puns like yeah she's making a fan fiction playlist yeah it's showing her showing her bare leg to him in the kitchen like Uh, can I just say for a second like that scene makes me laugh so much because a couple things remember how in episode one she's like um he hasn't even been issued a woman so like we don't know the last time nick saw any oh my gosh (laughs) i don't know how long he's been in gilead like everybody wears dresses i mean like that may have been the first knee he ever saw we don't i mean like that was a lot that was like thigh you know that's like very very (laughs) intense um and then for her to like show him more thigh like i see you looking i see you liking it here's more and he's and he literally is just like you have to stop they're gonna kill you but also like jesus it. christ that's a beautiful thigh you know it's like it's like it's like this um he's trying to be this like noble gentleman but also he's just human and she's beautiful and into him and it's very easy um and he's conflicted but it always reminds me of like a victorian fucking like jane austen novel right like these stares from across the room and like flashes of an ankle and shit i'm just like what the fuck like century is this like yeah and it's interesting that the show i believe has said that it's basically set in current time so season four is like 2021 uh but it definitely seems like gilead is a land lost in time um so i think that's a wrap on our season one episode two spoiler free analysis thank you for joining us we had a lot of fun discussing it And we hope you join us next Monday for our season one, episode three analysis. Spoiler free. Uh, If you're a longtime fan, there'll be an extra segment on Wednesday of this week where we do a deep dive into the same episode, season one, episode two. We'll be full of spoilers and talking about this episode in context of the show to date, which is through season four. So thanks again for joining us and we will see you next week. You know, I think about us, the three of us. What we could be. I think about it all the time. Please, it's terrible. No, it's not. I know Jim. She's my friend. I care about her. How's your day going? You look pretty. Thanks. I wore it just for you. Her father's a driver named Nick. He helped me to survive. Yes, you can, because I can't lose you. I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. What about you? Your girlfriend is a badass. 